would take the time to share my newest project I'm really excited about. So I found a website online that is called Guitars for Vets. And what they do is they uh, take in old used guitars that they refurbish and then gift to vets that are returning that may perhaps have some emotional issues or they just need a, a, a lift, you know, to say thank you for what you've done for our country. I just think it's a wonderful idea, no matter why they're doing it. So as part of that program, they actually invite artists to hand paint guitars and that they can then sell and help fund the project. So I applied and I got accepted and I got my guitar. So now I'm kind of doing this backwards because I didn't think about filming this until I was halfway through the process. So I'm going to kind of backwards rig this a little bit. Um, I did take some of me stripping the lacquer off. And uh, so I'll kind of put this video together so that I can show you that and then we'll show you the painting part. So why am I sharing this with you? Well, <laughs> I know that a lot of you that um, watch my videos are teachers and I thought, whoa, this could be such a cool project for an art club to take on. Um, now, there are some limitations with that. You would have to have a really talented group of, of art students, I think. You know, beginning art students tend to sometimes gunk on the paint. And we want to make sure that, you know, if you're painting the surface of the guitar, you want to put thin layers on so that when you're finished and you input the finished um, surface prep on there, the varnish or whatever you're going to put on to finish it off, that it still retains good sound quality. And if we were to layer that paint on there really thick so it was textural, it would probably mess up the sound quality. Keep that in mind. The other thing that I would say to you is that if you do take this project on, there's some hefty prep work to get to a point where you can paint on the surface. And that requires some heavy duty chemicals. So as the teacher, I would suggest you do the prep work and not um, let the, the students work with those caustic <laughs> supplies, as, I, as it were. But anyway, that said, I still think it would be a great project for an art club. So here we are outside in the cold. It is starting to warm up, but the sun is actually helping my stripper work a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've, I've had this sitting for 15 minutes, like I explained before. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on a pair of chemical gloves before I get started. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And then it's just a matter of scraping. Now what we discovered is that um, as good as this stuff works, it's only taking off the top layer of this lacquered finish. And so, you know, we're still got some work to do, but I'm just using a, a putty knife. And you want to be careful because we don't want to gouge the wood, but I'm using a, a putty knife that has kind of a, a sharp edge to it. And that's just coming right off that top layer. I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe I'll tilt this just a little bit for you. So it's hard to do one-handed, and ta-da! It's just coming right off of there. Now, where are we at in the scheme of things? At this moment in time, I have gotten to this stage of prep work. When I first got the guitar, it was completely this color here, shiny, lacquer, and not easy to get off. Um, you know, I watched a lot of videos, so again, that's what I would do for yourself. Watch several of the pros <laughs> in terms of refinishing guitars. 
before you dive in because I am not a pro at this. But I, I watched the videos and I took some of the advice and the one that I went with was a paint stripper. But even so, and, and following instructions, it was it did not come off easy. Part of it was because it's wintertime in Texas, and we have really bizarre winters. So yesterday, I got up, it was 25 degrees, and by the afternoon, it was like 60-something. It was really fun. And I noticed that um, stripping worked a lot better when it was warm. So once it started cooling down, the stripper didn't work quite as well. Just to keep that in mind. The side. So I've got the back, I've got the front, I've got it sanded down. So I'm ready now to put gesso on. All right, I am now at the gesso stage. And what I will do is I'll put a coat of gesso on um, and it'll be textural and I don't really want that gesso to be textural. So I will lightly sand it and maybe require more than one coat of gesso. I'm not sure. Right, right now I'm just gonna cover it and I'll do the front and get it all ready and then I'll, I'll segue to the back. So one thing at a time, right? And you know, I'm all about <laughs> time management here. So I just squirt it on. Uh, that way I don't waste any. And I try to squirt on just what I need. Um, I'm brushing away from the edge. That way, I won't get any on the edge. And I don't have to worry about taping again, right? I probably will tape when I do... Um, my actual painting, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe not. I'm a little bit of a lazy painter. my brush really well, let this dry, sand it a little bit, and we'll be ready to create. So excited! 